My question is regarding the campus master plan. Yeah. Um, this was formed before the earthquake based on inputs from consultants, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, and it has been used since then to make uh, decisions um, regarding some, you know, make some important decisions um, in the framework we've been told, like for example the demolition of the mushroom and the semen building. Um, why is this document still being used um, when it uh, hasn't even been approved by a university council and do we even need one of these? Should we have to throw it all out and reconsider post it? So you're, you're right in saying that the campus master plan was a draft and the planning process has been ongoing. So that's the first. And secondly, there are a set of principles which have been approved by the university council that are uh, to guide major uh, capital works choices. So those principles uh, are confirmed and they were confirmed post the earthquake. So that's an important evolution of decision making. That decisions about the mushroom and the semen building uh, were partly informed by, but certainly not driven by, the campus master plan. But the reality of those two structures is that when we did the cost and benefit analysis, the technical fix, and the functionality compromises that would be made, then the decision was made that in both those cases, uh, demolition was the preferred alternative. So um, they weren't specifically saying the campus master plan says you've got to have a road here or you've got to have this there. Uh, but the campus master plan in that sense of precincts, uh, in that sense of wanting uh, to be able to have a set of, I think there's 10 guiding principles. Uh, when we look at any single building choice, we certainly look at it in the context of those um, guiding principles. Uh, one is a more effective and efficient utilisation of space. That if we are going to reduce our overheads, one of the ways to do that is to have less square metres of space. So not everything that is demolished is going to be replaced. Right, thanks very much for that, guys. We're just out of time now. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Carr for coming along and, and, and making yourself available to hear those questions today. But uh, also, thank you very much for the questions that have come through, both on the Facebook page and here today. Um, they're really pertinent, really insightful questions as well. And I think it's really important that, um, although Dr. Carr and his, his team have a duty to come and talk to us. We've got a duty as well for um, the other students and for students in the future to make sure that we get out and, and take our own initiative in asking those questions and making sure that our voices are heard as well. So thanks very much for coming along today and doing just that. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you all.